I'm 20. I'm a queer fangirl who spends too much time on the internet. I'm Robert. I'm not quite 50. And I don't spend as much time on the internet, but I have seen way too many movies and TV shows. And this is 50v20. The podcast where we take a look at queer representation in media. One ship at a time. So we talked about Dreary last week, yeah, we in case you can't tell from whatever whatever the episode whatever. ends up being titled. Did I say whatever really weirdly? Yeah, you did. Okay. I made fun of you. You did? Yeah. And I will leave it. Okay. <laughs> that's how you understand us. Okay. We, if you don't know what that is from the title, that's Draco and Harry from Harry Potter. From and Harry Potter. From the Harry Potter book <laughs> sentence. Not from Harry Potter. <laughs> It's like a whole series. Yeah. There's like books seven, and like sequels seven books and prequels. Plus some and side books. Movies and theme parks. Yeah. <laughs> well, not so whole theme parks, but worlds and sections theme of parks. theme parks. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. Well, this week we were going to focus more on Wolfstar, who are, I guess, have even less screen time together than Draco and Harry. But I'd say arguably more evidence for them being a couple. Yeah. I have auditory processing, and it took me about 10 seconds to realize what you said. You have auditory processing? (laughs) Everyone. Well, okay. (laughs) Sorry to our deaf list. (laughs) Yeah, we'll cut that. (laughs) Everyone who isn't, anyone who's listening to this show has auditory processing. you say that oh gosh that was great anyway yeah i have have auditory processing disorder it's real it's a real thing and it happens anyway yes (laughs) oh gosh i'm sorry um we're talking yeah we're talking about wolfstar which i actually like more than jerry fun fact Hmm. i love them i i don't know i don't know how this one came to be i really don't I got into this one super late. Um, I joined the party pretty late. You know what actually happened? So I was on Instagram and I saw this like fan art, right? And I thought it was Snow Baz, which if you guys don't know, some of you will probably know, is the ship between Simon Snow and Baz in um the Carry On series. Oh, right. So they look like really similar. Like, just as couples. Okay. So in the fan art, I thought it was a Snow Bass fan art. And I was like, this is so cute. Oh my god, look at Snow Bass. And then I realized that in the comments, everyone was like, oh, Wolfstar. I'm like, who the hell is Wolfstar? I thought this was Snow Bass. So then I went into a very long, deep dive rabbit hole into Tumblr of Wolfstar. I didn't even know this fandom existed until like a year ago. But they exist, and they're real, and they're passionate, and I love it. I, I don't remember their interactions from the books. I know, they, I mean, obviously they knew each other, and it's a big deal when they see each other again, but I don't remember how it played out. Now, in the movies, I can see why anyone buys into they're in a much more intimate relationship. Than There's something there. Here. Like, Sirius putting his hand on Remus's heart and telling him, this is where you are, and I'll, or whatever, whatever, however he says it. You know the man you truly are, Remus. This heart is where you truly live. This heart here. Yeah. As he's trying to, like, help him through his transition into a wolf. Oh. Is, like, him, and they're, like, hugging and up close is, yeah. It's just, it's just, you know. <laughs> Movies don't normally do that with the straight men, friends. Right. And it was another one of those cases where, like, is it British or is it gay? Yes. <laughs> and I'm like, because in America, absolutely, no, you would right? not, like, touch your homie's heart and be like, this is where, like. <laughs> he And Sirius does the same, or no, 
Is it Sirius who does that with Harry, or is it Remus? One of them does the same with, or I think it's Sirius. Sirius does that does with that Harry. Does that with Harry as well, mm-hmm. where he touches his chest. Yeah. And is it, I mean, that plays, yeah, it's like, is it, are, is it British or gay? <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure, and so given <laughs> other things, gay. it leans gay. And I think there is a clear, the few scenes of Sirius and Remus together fit that. They're really not together that much. No. Which is why it's so wild that... It's basically like five scenes where they're doing anything. Literally. Which is why it's so wild that, like, the fandom was able to, like, create such a thing of them. And they have thousands of fanfics, fan arts, like, everything. There's a lot. I think people are also interested in, um, just, like, the Marauders in general. Mm, yeah. Which, for anyone, if you're listening, you probably know who they are, but just in case. <laughs> if which, you <laughs> aren't up on your Harry Potter and you just like us and our show. Yeah. Explain. The Marauders are Remus, Sirius, James Potter, so Harry's dad, and Peter Pettigrew, who is the rat, <laughs> who ends up being a Death Eater. And they have, like, a long history. Which, can I be really honest? Yeah, I can. This is our podcast. I think that's the goal. I genuinely think that, like, the Marauders are, like, way more interesting than the cast that we have in, like, eight films. I think it helps that they're boiled down to a very few scenes and descriptions. Because that means most of what they are is just in our head, which makes them more interesting. Yeah. Because we are filling in the details. Same with, like, why we have Wolfstar. Is we're filling in details because we see people who have a history long ago, haven't seen each other in... Over a decade. Yeah. And then immediately are standing up for each other, defending each other. Like, immediately. Hugging. Yeah. Never mind that their, you know, magical forms are similar, which I forget the rules if an animagus chooses their animal. Like, uh, did Sirius choose to be a, a do- dog, dog because his boyfriend was a wolf? See, that's another one of those cases where I'm like, did I read that in a fanfic or is that actually (laughs) canon? (laughs) I'm like, wait a second. It's clearly deliberate that they're similar because that is why it's part of like, we have a werewolf at the school, as they find out, but they think it's serious because there's a dog. Like, it's a way of them getting mixed up for the plot to work. Yeah. Totally. But yeah, I would definitely watch like a Marauders TV show. If there was like a mini series mm. or a movie or something, I love it. I or want if more. Once they make the Harry Potter show on Max, if they have longer flashbacks to them, even yes, that'd be cool. Can we do like a flashback episode. Please? They should have more flashbacks anyway, because then we'll get more. We could get more of it in like Half Blood Prince, maybe when we're talking about Snape. We could have more totally. more footage for Snape, and we'd have James and Lily be the right age. <laughs> yeah, why are they like forty? Right, why are <laughs> like, they old I'm enough confused. to be their own parents? I'm confused. I thought they had them when they were, like, 20. Right, because they're that age in photos. If it was their ghosts that age, we could be like, maybe ghosts maybe just ghost keep age? aging. Like, oh. they get kept up because they're looking after their kid. Yeah. Because they do say they they haven't left. That's what they tell Harry in the, when he sees them. Right. And so if that's actually how ghosts work, maybe they choose to age or not. But yeah. We, in see the, we see pictures of, of them. them. I'm like, why do you look like you're 40 when you're literally 20? I'm confused. Yeah, it's very odd. But... Yeah. To be fair, I think Snape is then also too old, but who cares? He, that actor's awesome. Right. <laughs> right. Well, I was like, oh, maybe the theory is that, like, the more, like, intense magic you use, it just kind of makes you, like, age or, like, kind of depletes your... Yeah, like Palpatine. Your youth. I don't know. Not that you would get that reference. Is that Lord of the Rings? That, no, is that Star Emperor Wars? from Star Wars. Oh, <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Take that out. Um, <laughs> is that Lord of the Rings? <laughs> we'll Close. see. You know what? I knew it was one of those thingies. The third thing I was going to guess was Star Trek. <laughs> Doesn't Star Trek have a gay couple? Maybe we'll talk Star about Star Trek that has well. lots of gay couples. Oh. Including, like, currently on Discovery, there's a... No, like a, like, trans one Trans character and a... Maybe we'll... Non-binary character that are having an ongoing... Maybe we'll talk about that at some point. Probably not anytime soon, but... You don't watch any Star Trek, so that'd be interesting for me to pick episodes. Actually, I could probably pick episodes for that couple. Oh my god, I've been Easily. watching Merlin. Mm. It's so good. Like, we have to talk about it, but it's like five seasons, so I'll have to, like, help you out. But anyway, sorry. <laughs> Merlin's on my list of things to try to watch. It's so time. good. I'm, like, completely obsessed right now. But anyway, I know I'm, like, 15 years late to the party. Whoopsie. It's fine. What was I saying? Oh, Yeah. I don't know, my ADHD is popping off today, you guys. Podcasts are ADHD friendly. 
Yes. Okay, great. Because, yeah, my ADHD is, like, very confused right now. Oh, I was just going to say, like, a brief, like, overview of the Marauders, like, oh, right, their right. history. Yeah. So, the Marauders were, like, early on in the war? Or was it a different war? It's, like, early on in the war, right? I don't know how war No, that would have been the end of the war. Different you mean with Voldemort. Yeah. Because so that would be a new war. Remember, Lily and James were only, like, 21 when they died, which means only a few years after they got out of Hogwarts. Right. The Marauders started when they were at Hogwarts. Right. So it's near the end of Voldemort, and because they... he's been around since the 40s. Okay. Well, Tom Riddle was a student in the 40s. Okay, yeah, so the Marauders were kind of, like, fighting against the Dark Arts and all of that. Similar to Harry and his right. friend group, basically. They were, like, all besties. Sirius and Remus were, like, besties. Although, I think Sirius was actually best friends with James. Yes. Yeah. Which makes even more sense why Sirius and Remus would be boyfriends in my head, because they weren't best friends. No. But they are, like, extremely, like, intimate, which yeah. means they're either, like, besties or something else. And James kind of has that role of, like, Sirius's best mate, you know? There's also... This devil's advocate would be the way to play this. <laughs> Why Sirius would be attached to Remus is Sirius has been in prison for over a decade and he knows the other Marauders are dead. Even right. though he's wrong about one of them. He knows they're dead. Right. And there's Remus. So as soon as he sees him, he's going to be excited. Right. Regardless. Oh, we're like kind of skipping. I, I have something. I'll, I'll come back to that. I have something about that. <laughs> uh, I'll put a bookmark in my brain. Hopefully my ADHD doesn't throw it away. But yeah, so the Marauders are, like, fighting against Dark Arts. James Potter is someone that, like, I really want more of a... Like, I want a Marauders TV show or movie or something because, like, I want to explore James. Because it literally, the, like, the only flashback that we have of James is him being an asshole. Yeah. So, like... Essentially, James and Snape are the opposite of Harry and Draco. Yeah. The Slytherin is the nice one, and the Gryffindor is the jerk. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So, yeah, I think it's, like, really messed up that James is bullying him, and that's, like, mm -hmm. literally all we see. So I'm By wondering... The movie, they even do it down to, like, one flashback, so we, yeah. that's what we get. Yeah, and it was from Snape's, like, perspective, to be fair. So I am wondering exactly, like, what led up to that, like, why he was treating Snape like that. I mean, obviously they thought Snape was weird. Yeah. And they didn't like that... He's weird and he's a Slytherin. And he didn't like that um, Snape was, like, spending so much time with Lily because James loved Lily. Yeah. Jealousy. Jealousy. But even then, like, he was just being cruel. It's just like, I don't know. Like, Harry, why'd you name your son James after, like, a fucking bully? Yeah, the, the Harry <laughs> Potter uh, fandom, uh, on the fandom website thing, has, like, AKA under different characters because, like, he's also known as Prongs. They're also known as Oh, this. yeah. But for Snape, it has a bunch of, like bullying nicknames like, don't put those as his also known oh, as. yeah poor <laughs> snape <mean. laughs> honestly they were cruel to snape but <sighs> yeah so that that's that and then um there's all the drama with uh voldemort comes obviously and he kills i'm guessing with a lot of what i said because i didn't read the book that's right. just what i know but well, it, we're talking most <clears throat> primarily about the movies here i read the books long ago and you haven't read them right um, but yeah, he kill Voldemort comes and kills James and Lily, right? And and Snape knew he was going to. Yeah, we see that in the final in the eighth film. Yeah, we see Snape making his deal with Dumbledore because yeah. he wants to protect Lily. Yeah, and for some reason he didn't age. <laughs> Still, we're like magic. 50. He, he figured out what he wanted to look like and he went with it. Yeah, I love it. Honestly, Snape is an icon, and his robe is iconic as well. Oh yeah, <laughs> but. Oh my god. What was I saying? Jesus Christ. <laughs> You're giving us a history lesson on the Marauders, even though you know nothing. Even though I know nothing. I <laughs> I'm trying to, like, separate what I've, like, read and seen on Tumblr versus, like, what, like, actually is the actual story. Because I know someone's going to step in and be like, Sarah, that is not well, how I think it went that's down. part of the... Part of the point of what you're trying to say is that the Marauders have a lot more going on and could be a very interesting story. In the movie, we get very little of them. Exactly. Even the, even the map, we don't even know exactly why they have it. It just exists. Yes. Thank you for articulating that in a way that makes sense. But yeah, so James and Lily die, whatever. 
And not whatever. Oh my god, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, or whatever. Yeah. It's only the you know driving force of the whole story. No, that's very tragic. I'm sorry. Anyway, so then Sirius, like, what's the whole thing with Peter? Like, I'm hitting a blank, but Sirius, Pete, Peter, Peter is the one who betrayed them. Peter betrayed them and like gave them up, right? Right, but then he, I don't remember exactly if they explain it in the movies, and I don't remember from the books. He loses a finger. Or maybe cut, lose the finger on purpose, uh-huh. so that Sirius is framed for the murders, including his. Even though he leaves to go or goes into hiding as a rat, yes, scavenged because Voldemort's then dead as well. Yes, that. So then Sirius gets sent to Azkaban, and he's in Azkaban for like twelve years, and leads us to the whole Prisoner of Azkaban, which is like a, the whole third book and movie. And Remus believed that Sirius was guilty because right. he was framed and everything. Until Harry tells him Peter's alive. Yeah. And t- well, because he thinks that Peter's dead, right? So when they have the Marauder's Map, Harry tells Remus in Prisoner of Azkaban that he saw Peter walking around yeah. on the map. And then Remus is like, oh. <laughs> it like kind of all clicked like in like one moment. He's like. Oh, shoot. <laughs> like, I got this wrong. Yeah. Oopsie. So, that's pretty sad. And then Sirius comes back. They have that whole dramatic moment, which, which is so dramatic. Which has a great line for them being a couple in that Snake, who knew them long ago, says that they are arguing like an old married couple. Quarreling they literally like an old are. married couple. They literally are. I beg you. Just don't be a fool. He can't help it. He's happy by Sirius, now. be quiet. Don't find yourself, Remus. Uh, listen to you two quarreling like an old married couple. What? But also, like, the fact that as soon as Sirius and, and Sirius see each other in Prisoner of Azkaban, they are, like, freaking, like, smiling at each other. Like, it's like, there's a lot of shit going on. Like, it, it's not really, like, I mean, I guess it's happy that they're seeing each other, but it mm-hmm. is kind of funny that they're just, like, smiling. Yeah. And then the first thing Siri says to him, I believe, is like, you would know all about the madness from within, wouldn't you, Remus? Right. Well, you'd know all about the madness within, wouldn't you, Remus? Which, like, I'm sorry, that's flirting. And, like, that's the first it's thing. It's definitely you intimate. Yeah. That's the first thing you say. <laughs> like, yep. like the. F- so, yeah. And then Sirius. I think Remus helps Sirius. Well, we don't need to hash the whole pl- plot of the scene. I'm they, not, Peter's but... in there, Sirius wants to kill him. Remus doesn't want him to because they need Peter to be there, so... No, but I'm I'm explaining the parts that are actually gay. I know, but I think you have more of a gay thing once they're outside, because then it's, like... Who's the director? Is it Coron that did the third one? And he, like... Didn't he tell them that? Okay. The actors? Yes. But I'm gonna disagree for a second, because that scene... I won't explain the whole scene. But, like, that scene was kind of gay because Remus helps Sirius stand up and then they're, like, holding on to each other, which is, like, I don't know, kind of intimate. And then as soon as, like, because they think that Sirius wants to kill Harry, right? Yeah. So, like, as soon as that's happening, Remus, like, stands in front of Sirius and, like, starts, like, defending him. And they're just, like... They definitely know each other very well, because that's why I like the thing about Snape saying they're quarreling like an old married couple, is because Sirius wants to kill Pettigrew as soon as he knows he's there. Mm-hmm. Snape comes in, Lupin's, Remus says, Severus, don't be a fool. Sirius like, he can't help it, it's a habit by now. <laughs> and Remus says, Sirius, be quiet. He says, be quiet yourself, Remus. Says, oh, listen to you too, quarreling like an old married couple. <laughs> yeah. And Sirius is also not very nice to Snape. Why don't you run along and play with your chemistry set? <laughs> oh, they're bullies. Wow. But at that point, yeah, Lupin had already helped uh, Sirius get up and hugged him. The thing I think fits it more is when they go outside, though, because then like he's af- actively like hugging him very tightly because he's holding him in place so the kids can get away. Yeah, Sirius is. They don't just like hug though. They like literally stand there like like holding on to each other, and the only reason that Remus like pulls away is because he's like defending Sirius from Hermione who's yelling. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, Sirius does say that Peter cut off his finger so that everyone would think he was dead. We covered it in a weird roundabout confused way, but I think we covered that sequence from that film. We did, yeah, we did. We did. Now then we don't Well you didn't we didn't get into the wolves, but or the wolves. Well they run off together. We don't But what'd you think about the you said the thing about the heart? 
Well, that's when he's holding him really close when he's transforming. He's holding, he puts his hand on his heart and. Who? Like, you didn't explain this part. Sirius has his <laughs> hand on Remus's heart. Well, on his chest. What are you doing over there? I'm scrolling through a transcript of the film. The problem is that scene happens sort of twice. <laughs> parts of it. It's okay. We explained. Yeah. We explained. Basically, it's it's a thing where it's like he's very intimate, holding him really close, and he's got his hand on his heart and saying, like, this is something like, this is who, where you are. Like, he's trying to tell him to hold on to it. You know the man you truly are, Remus. This heart is where you truly live. This heart here. Because he didn't take his... He's, what's funny is he immediately says, you like, ask, did you take your potion? Mm-hmm. Like, he has a potion that keeps it away, and Sirius remembers that from 12 years ago. Yeah. Even though he's been in prison. Well, that's, um, that's like another, like, fandom belief trope headcanon that, like, Sirius was always the one who was, like, supportive of Remus, yes. um, and, like, would look after him, like, being the wolf and everything. Which makes sense why he's bringing that up, like, literally 12 years later. Yeah. It's sweet. It's cute. And meanwhile, if you do have the wolf star as a thing, Remus's relationship with Harry, a bunch, a bunch of descriptions I saw were, like, as, like, this... Was a supportive uncle or something like that? They call him. Yeah, supportive uncle. Yeah. Like your actual uncle is like Sirius and Remus are his uncles who look, can look after him. His gay uncles. Yeah. He's, it's, it's a thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's his gay uncles. Yeah, I also will just briefly say that in like the Order of the Phoenix, when Harry arrives, Sirius is sitting with Remus with his with arm, arm around, him, around yeah. Remus. And then For they, come, why? And they go to the door together. Yeah. I'm like, okay, yeah. what happened while, while you guys uh-huh. were away? Like, what the heck? <laughs> and then, you know, Sirius dies, of course. <gasps> he does? <laughs> spoilers. Um, Not in my heart. <laughs> because in the movies, Tonks is one of those characters that gets short shrift. We don't get a lot of good setup for her and Remus being a couple. Well, because she's are. a rebound, though. Right. Or a thruple. No! <laughs> <laughs> Not a thruple. No, she's just a rebound. I get it. And Remus has a type. Okay, it turns to a dog and she's a shapeshifter. Yeah. It fits. It's, yeah, you know. How often does she make herself look like serious? Or would that be inappropriate? Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is that a thing? <gasps> I'm going to write <laughs> a fanfic. That better be a fanfic thing already. <laughs> I never thought about it like that. Oh my god. Like she totally could. Oh my god, that's why they get married. Oh my god, stop. Oh my god, help. (laughs) (laughs) She can turn into that same dog. (sighs) Oh my god, that's crazy. That's wild. (laughs) (laughs) And then then the the final Remus and Sirius thing is in the last film. After, or right before Harry dies, when he has the resurrection stone, he sees James and Lily, Remus and Sirius. Yeah. Which are... Two couples. His parents and his godparents. Uh Uh-huh. So, like, Sirius being there absolutely makes sense. In the films, I'm not sure Remus being there makes sense. But he's still there because that seems... Because he's with Sirius. It seems like one of those... Sirius and Remus is one of those things that it feels like Rowling should have confirmed at some point. Like she did Dumbledore. He's like, no, he's gay. It just never came up in the books. It should have been one of those things that... Yeah, well, that's the weird thing, too, that we didn't really touch on is, like, that... um, Oh, God, I don't know his name. I'm sorry. But the actor who played Remus? Uh, David Lewis. Okay, yes, him. He said that he thought that Remus was gay. Like, when they filmed Prisoner of Azkaban. I think the director told him. Remember, we've already said in multiple episodes of this show, werewolf is a (laughs) easy gay (laughs) metaphor. metaphor. Yeah, but he, I believe, I don't want to put words in his mouth, so I don't have a quote, but he said something along the lines of, like, just thinking that Remus was a gay character and, like, being surprised when he got with Tonks. Yeah. Because he was like, wait, I thought I was gay this whole time. (laughs) Which you can kind of see is maybe, like, why they were playing it like that. Like, just kind of for funsies. Also because, I don't know the guy who plays Sirius, I'm sorry. Do you know his name? Sirius is, um, Yes. Yes? (laughs) Yes. Sirius is yes. God damn it. He's in freaking everything. He's awesome always. He's awesome always. Seriously. <sighs> Seriously. He's awesome. I almost said Alan Rickman, but Alan Rickman is Snape. Gary Oldman. Gary Oldman. Yes. Since, like, I've noticed <clears throat> him ever since the, the professional, or Leon, the professional. Yeah, Gary Oldman. I don't want to put words in anyone's mouth because I wasn't there. 
But it kind of seems like Gary Oldman, like, he's just the type who's kind of, like, down. Yeah. For, like, whatever. Like, he's Mm -hmm. just a great actor and, like, is down to just, like, try things and play with things. It's also an easy energy to get for, even if he's not playing for that, the energy is the same because, kind of like Bellatrix later, they're these crazed people who just got out of Azkaban who have a lot of energy for everything. Yeah. Yeah. All the emotions are heightened. It's like when they come off of their, uh, whoa, that's the magicians. I almost had this. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> just mixed what? up Hogwarts. When and they the come magicians. off of who? No, when they do the thing where they bottle their emotions and oh. they come off it and everything's heightened. Yeah, and the magicians. His is kind of like that. He's been in Azkaban and he's, everything's bigger. Totally. And so the energy is there and I'm sure the actor was in for it. The two actors seem like they are in. Right. And Remus is like kind of like that, like, place of like comfort and like reason and stability for both Sirius and Harry at some points. And Um, you know the adult actors aren't reading the novels, so they're not ahead. So even in Order of the Phoenix, they don't know Remus is gonna end up with Tonks. Yeah, exactly. So arm around him. And the director's probably like, yeah, that's cool. Or even told them like, hey, yeah, you guys are buddies. I mean, I assume in that scene they were hanging out, drinking, whatever it is British people do when they Right, that's the another is a British or gay. Right. Makes sense to, like, put your armor on your buddy. You guys are having a good night, even though you're trapped in this house. <laughs> so, yeah. Definitely, definitely gay. Yeah. And then they come back as ghosts together. And then they come back as ghosts. And, yeah, literally Remus dies, and, like, two scenes later, he's back with his dead boyfriend. Also, specifically, that ghost scene means, if we trust, I think it's Lily who says they haven't left. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. That means the ghosts are actively following Harry around, which means Remus went to be with Harry and Sirius and James. And, like, he's out there specifically for that. Yeah. He had to walk away from where his body is. His body's back in Hogwarts. He had to walk away from Tonks, his ghost. Yeah. Oh, yeah, she's dead, too. Yeah, she died with him. Oh. But she wasn't there. Now I feel bad for Tonks, though. She's okay. She don't need no man. She's great. She's What's chilling. What's her ghost doing? I love her. No, I did she's have a thought chilling. regarding Tonks. If she's a shapeshifter and can change who she is. Maybe she went to go be with their son. Oh, yeah. Because their kid is an uh, infant, right? Mm-hmm. Somewhere. I forget where. You know what's so funny? J.K. Rowling, actually, at one point, she does this thing where she apologizes for deaths. Like, every <laughs> year, maybe? Um, And, like, recently, she apologized for Remus. She was like, I'm so sorry. Why did I do that to that little infant? <laughs> well, it could have been a setup for a future story. You know, Tonks yeah. and Remus's kid could be Teddy's supporting... the next Harry Potter. Is he in? He could be a supporting character in Cursed Child. He'd Is be... he in Cursed Child? I have no idea. I don't know. He'd be a know. couple years older if he also went to Hogwarts. He'd be involved. Actually, he'd be quite a years older. Oh, right. He'd, he'd be... be a decade older. He'd no. Be... Yeah. He'd... No, he'd only be a couple years older. No. Because it's oh, because it's nineteen years. Nineteen later. years later. Right. They so. Skip. So, yeah, it would be quite a, it would be quite a, quite a, quite a years later. He could um, be at Hogwarts while they're there, but he'd be like seventh year. Yeah, he's about to get out of there. He doesn't, he doesn't care about their drama. They'd know each other though, because they're god cousins or whatever you call them. God cousins. <laughs> I don't think that's a thing. He's the child of your god, your father's godfather's boyfriend. Yeah. I am your father's brother's nephew's cousin's former roommate. What's that make us? Absolutely nothing. Um, anyway. <laughs> so, in the triangle, queer, kind of queer baiting, it's but not into queer really? baiting if we had confirmation that the director told them to do it. I don't know that it's queer baiting from the book. I don't think Rowling does that. Not on purpose. There, I think it's more of a, it's British, not gay, is that she's writing these, and that's good to have two men that are that close. Totally. If they're not gay, it's a very healthy representation of not gay men. Still a cute friendship. You know? Yeah. Um, Because they're not toxic about it. I don't think it's really queer baiting because queer baiting has like this like negative connotation. I don't think it's negative, but I don't think it's like delusional either. No. No. No, it's like kind of right in the middle. Of the triangle. Yep. It's not necessarily canon, but it's not delusional. And they didn't really it can't queer get, bait. And it can't get to a healthy representation because there's just not enough to them. They get to see each other, then Sirius has to be hidden hiding again. Yeah. And then they're off screen. And then they die. 
So, so we don't know. Yeah. What we see is... You know, it was very your gaze, though. Yeah, both of them. And Dumbledore. And Dumbledore, yeah. Okay. And I assume Grindelwald. Right. But as of Secrets of Dumbledore, that hasn't happened yet. He's still alive. I don't know. I haven't seen it. I He's got to be dead by the time Tom Riddle gets out of Hogwarts. I assume. I'm not well versed. Maybe I need to get into that ship next. <laughs> we'll deal with that sometime. Maybe. Because that one is more overt, and I think because it's not explicit, is queer baiting. But we'll talk about that triangle when we talk about those. Right. Any last things? Oh, wait. We have to do our names? Uh, the We never did the names. Okay. So, when with Harry Potter, as I said last week, the names are good, but they're specifically good for a book about magic families and things. Like, all the, the, like, Sirius Black, Remus Lupin, all of those. Those are all great. Harry Potter sounds like a British kid. Yeah, I feel that. Ron Weasley. James and Lily Potter. Yeah. Hermione. I get it. The Weasleys all have normal names. The Weasley. Yeah. British names, but normal names. Draco Malfoy's, like, super pretentious. I believe that his dad but would his name dad him something, yeah. like, pretentious like that. And the Malfoys are pure blood, arrogant assholes, so, of totally. course, Lucius Malfoy is a name they're gonna give a kid. That kid's gonna name his... Draco. Draco. Yeah, I believe it. I think just, like, the biggest crime to humanity was Cho Chang. Yeah. <laughs> the, well, not the biggest crime to humanity. <laughs> Rowling's done worse. Oh! Just go on Twitter. Oh. I but. don't have Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> I stay away from that place. But, yeah, Cho Chang, and that's a, that's a problem. Yeah, Cho Chang. Cho Chang, mm, here's the thing. It just doesn't make sense as a name. I think we we all know this thing by now. But yeah, it doesn't make sense. That was sense. our example in our first episode. It's names like that names bad. that are bad. <laughs> yeah. Cho Chang, probably the worst name in the entire series. Like, what the heck? Yeah, because some of her names are, even though they're a bit on the nose, like Dolores Umbridge is so on the nose, but perfect. Yeah. Because Dolores is nice. Umbridge is bad, and that's who she is. And and, and Fleur de la Cure is kind of funny. Right. But it's also, for a magic user, I don't remember her family's history, it mm-hmm. fits. So good. Yeah, Cho Chang is just, like, the worst. Like, why'd you do that? Like, that's not a name. I don't get it. <laughs> a lot of her professor names are a bit on the nose, but they're also cool. Like, Dumbledore is a great name. It's, Snape. It's just a... I, this is something I just remembered I had. I had the teacher's guide to the first book. It was this little, tiny little book. And it had a section on names and how, like, Dumbledore was some translation of Bumblebee. Which is, is it cool. really? Yeah. <gasps> That's And I'm cute. like, but also oh, Dumbledore sounds like a wizard's name. It does. It does. Yeah, and I, I believe it. Yeah, so the names, you've got some hits and you got some misses. That's Overall, they're pretty good for the setting. Yeah. It was all the real world and they were all muggles. But oh. even then, Hermione Granger, Hermione was a name I was very familiar with prior to Harry Potter. But it apparently it's just a British name. It's yeah. out there. Yeah. I mean, my name's Sarah, so like, what right. can I say? <laughs> I've never heard of that name before. <laughs> <laughs> Which could have been someone that went to Hogwarts. Wales is near Scotland. Sarah. And Sarah's a Welsh name, so. I could have gone to Hogwarts. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So, canon. Yes. I'd say Wolfstar is more arguably. Canon? Canon than. You know why? Because partly because Wolfstar, there's so many blanks that you can just fill in whatever the heck you want. Whereas with Drary, you definitely have to change the actual plot. Especially if you've read the books, because there's a lot more of the dislike between them. It comes across even when they're not near each other. Yeah. In the movies, it's just scenes here and there. Right. Wolfstar, especially in the, the way the third movie plays it, their reunion and... The embrace outside as he's transforming and Sirius transforming to go with him. Yeah. That all plays very well as though these two are into each other and they missed each other for 12 years. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, good luck, Harry Potter fans. Hope you're staying safe out there. Yeah, (laughs) and if, if you bought into the... I didn't buy the video game... Hogwarts Legacy? Yeah. Isn't there more about the Marauders in that one, though? Maybe. Oh, maybe I should buy it, but, like, oh. I know. We were trying to be good people. It's, it's, it's one of, <sighs> Rowling's a problem because she's Rowling's still... Rowling's a problem. She's still attached to her into intellectual property. She's you know? still attached to the thing that she created. 
Well, I I mean, yes. <laughs> like you you can get into Lovecraft and appreciate his fiction while understanding he's a horrible person because he's dead. His family doesn't make money off of this. He doesn't make money off of this. Mm-hmm. Rowling is still making money off of all this Harry Potter stuff. So anytime she's problematic, it doesn't feel good to support it. That being said, when the show shows up on Max, I'm going to watch it because it won't cost me anything extra. I still eat Chick-fil-A. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> There's the end of the line. <laughs> Thank you for listening. 50v20 is a production of Lemming and Drops Studio. You can find links to this show and more at lemmingdrops.com. Subscribe to the show and review the show on your favorite podcatcher. Join the Facebook group at Lemming Drop Studio Tour for updates. Follow the show on Twitter and Instagram at 50v20 Podcast. And send us gifts. And support the show at patreon.com slash lemming drops. Bye. I wanna do